let us jump into the main topic of why we're here, the semantic kernel. Now, the semantic kernel is an open source SDK that empowers developers to build custom AI agents. The semantic kernel allows developers to combine LLMs with native code and create AI agents that understand and respond to natural language prompts. It is an efficient middleware that enables rapid delivery of enterprise grade solutions, of course, AI powered, and best of all, their support for it across C Sharp, Python, and Java. So here's a little graphical representation of how it works, and I've taken this diagram from Microsoft documentation. So there is what we call the AI orchestration layer. This is the core of the semantic kernel stack, and it allows seamless integration of AI models and plugins, and this layer is responsible for combining these components to craft innovative user interactions. Then we have the connectors. So the semantic kernel offers a set of connectors that enable us as developers to integrate the LLM directly into our existing applications. And these connectors serve as the bridge between the application code and the AI models. Then we have the plugins. Now the semantic kernel operates on plugins, essentially serving as the body of the AI app. The plugins consist of prompts that you want the AI model to respond to and functions that can complete specialized tasks. So we have some built-in ones and of course we can build our own and we'll be looking at both of them in this course. All right, so I'm assuming that you've already set up your Microsoft as your account and you are able to log in. So once you log in, we're going to go straight into creating our open AI resource. So I'm going to search up here for open AI and actually have it right here, but you can always just type in the search and you're going to click on Azure open AI. And from here, we're going to go ahead and create that Azure open AI resource. Now do note that this resource will incur costs. So if you're on the free tier, then of course you have the credits and you might get very limited capabilities but otherwise you will incur costs. So after you're finished with the demo, do remember to tear down your resources to make sure you don't incur anything unnecessary. So for this course, I'm going to create a new resource group and I'm going to call this resource group semantic kernel RG. So just something that I can identify with. So when I'm Removing the resources, I just need to remove this resource group, which I've named very specifically based on the examples that we're going to be using. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and then give this a name. And this name generally want it to be unique. So you could use something else to make it unique. Um, by the time you're doing this course, my resource will no longer exist, but you can always like append like your name on it to just to make it a bit more unique, just in case they say it's not available. And for the pricing tier, I'm going to go with the standard. Now, if you want to see the full pricing details, you can do so via this link. And then I'm going to proceed. I'm going to confirm that I want all networks to be able to access this resource and I don't need to tag it and then hit next. And from here, it's going to ask me, or it's going to validate everything that has been entered, and then I can create. Now, once that completion step is done, we can go to resource. Now, this resource gives us access to Azure Open AI Studio. So let's go to Studio. And while it loads, you might be required to re-authenticate, so you can just authenticate using your Azure credentials, and in no time, you should be allowed in. So once we're here, what we want to do is create a new deployment. So this is us setting up the LLM that's going to power our kernel, right? The kernel is really just the code based connector to some LLM that we have. So once again, we're using Azure Open AI. And here I'm going to go to deployments and we're going to create a new deployment. So we're going to click deploy model and deploy a base model. So just for context, you can deploy a base model because the Azure Open AI has a several base models that are like pre-trained with certain information and for certain things. But we can also fine tune that base model or another model to make it more unique to our needs. So the needs of an airline company would be entirely different from the needs of a school, right? So the base model can be a general 
um, you know, go between for both of them because the base model would have been trained on a lot of every little thing or a little of every little thing. But then you really want to fine tune your model to fit your specific business needs sometimes. In this example, though, we're going to go with a base model. So let's deploy a base model and we're looking for the GPT. So you see here, you have several GPT models that are available to you and several versions. And each version has its own capabilities and would have been trained on certain information and up to a certain point. So when choosing the models, be very, very deliberate. However, I'm going to go with GPT-35 Turbo 16K. And if you don't see 16K, you can go with the regular GPT-35 Turbo. So from here, I'm going to confirm. And then I can give the deployment a specific name. So in the case where maybe I have multiple deployments of the same type of model, I would want to give them unique names. In this case, I'll just leave it with the default name, which is indeed the name of the model anyway. And I don't need to change anything. If you want to change stuff, you can go to customize and you can modify like the number of tokens being sent across per minute. You can change the version right now. Default is the only option and we have default and default version two for content filters and i'm not going to enable the dynamic quota and yeah i can now deploy all right so now we're going to be writing some code and in this lesson i'm going to go ahead and use visual studio code and the dotnet cli just because it's a bit easier and it's easier for everybody regardless of your os to follow along however if you're more comfortable with visual studio feel free to follow along because we're just simply creating a new console application. So using the .NET CLI, I'm going to run the command .NET new console dash O build your kernel. So this means create a new console app and output this app to a folder called build your kernel in whichever destination you have selected. So let's go ahead with that. Now I can CD into build your kernel and then do code dot to launch Visual Studio Code in that location. So once Visual Studio Code is launched, the next thing I want to do is bring up the terminal inside of Visual Studio Code. And I could also do this inside of the original terminal window, but why not use the one inside Visual Studio Code? So bringing up this terminal allows me to now type the command dot net add package Microsoft dot semantic kernel. So this will now go ahead and fetch that package that allows us to support semantic kernel in our application. And then it goes to NuGet, fetches that package. And once that is done, I'm just going to confirm the version that we're working with. So the version, if we go to the CS approach file, we are now on version 1.29.0. Now you can use this edit view or you can use a solution explorer, which is a bit more natural if you use Visual Studio. It feels a bit more natural with, with the way it's laid out. And this is available if you have installed that C Sharp dev kit. All right, so let's get into our example. So I'm going to start off with a using statement to use that semantic kernel. I'm also going to go ahead and initialize a builder. And this builder is going to be kernel.createBuilder. So remember that. When we started off discussing the kernel, we said that it's like a dependency injection container. So if you've used .NET Core before, this shouldn't seem too unfamiliar. Every time you open a program.cs in an ASP.NET Core application, or at least, an, let's say, an ASP.NET Core Razor Pages or MVC app that is pre-configured, you would always see some builder object that allows you to add dependencies. So this kernel builder is allowing us to add those LLM dependencies that we need for our application. So here I'm going to say add open AI and then you'll see add Azure open AI and the different kinds of Azure open AI um, services that I can add off the bat, right? I can also add plugins and services right here. So for this example, we are doing an AI chat completion app. And then this is going to have some it's going to have some overloads. So if we look at the overloads, it's expecting a dot deployment name, an endpoint, and different things like the token, credentials, service ID, etc. So you have different overloads for this uh, method. 
But before I fill those in, I'm just going to finish this up and say var kernel is equal to, and then we say builder, go ahead and build. So this is us saying, all right, take all of the different um, LLM endpoints and everything that we've added, and then just create one final kernel project, sorry, object, my bad. Now, just to speed this along so you don't have to sit and watch me type, I'm going to go ahead and say console.write line enter your inquiry. So this is a prompt to the user, and then I'm going to receive their inquiry, which I'm going to store in a variable called prompt. Now, once I have that input from the user, I'm going to go ahead and pass it along to the kernel. So I'm going to say var result is equal to, and then we're going to await the kernel. And just so you know, kernel has several methods asynchronous and synchronous alike so you can create function you can create plugin and we're going to get into all of those things as well we can invoke prompt invoke async etc invoke streaming so without getting into details of every single method what we're going to do here is invoke a prompt and we're using the asynchronous method hence the await and we're going to pass in that prompt variable that value and then we're going to go ahead and console.write line the result so once we've done all of this, let's backtrack now and fill in the missing information here. So let us look at the different um, the different parameters that are needed. So firstly, we need deployment name. And I'm going to kind of give the, I'm going to state the parameter name here so that we know what value we're putting in. So we need the deployment name. What's next? We can do the open AI client but I want to use the API key. So I'm looking at the next overload here and we can put in, so we can put in credentials. That's not the one I want. I can also put in that API key, right? So I can put in the string endpoint and then the API key. So let's put in endpoint there. And right now I'm just making them blank because of course we're going to go and fetch the values and then API key would be the next parameter. All right. So these are the three minimum bits of information that we need in order to allow the kernel to connect to our chat completion. So let's jump back over to the studio. So in the studio, we can firstly fetch the deployment name. So whatever name you gave it when you create it, that's the name that we're talking about. So back in the code, deployment name, is GPT-35, I didn't change it, so it's the same name, right? Then the endpoint and the API key. Now, it would be easy to think, oh, here's a target URI, that's the endpoint, but that's not quite the endpoint. So we have to jump back over to our portal, and in our portal, in the resource, as your open AI resource, let's go down to the keys and endpoints, and we'll see here the endpoint. So this endpoint is actually the first part of the target URI here. So it's actually up to this point, and then the rest of it is like the target URI for this resource, which you can use in certain situations. In this situation, we don't need all of that. So it's easier or better to target the open AI endpoint rather than the specific deployments endpoint, all right? So we're going to come back, and that is our endpoint. And then we can use the API key. And in testing, I realized this key is actually the same as the key one here. At least that was my experience. But either way, it's better you use the key that is associated with the endpoint that we want. So let's go ahead and copy that one and paste it. And do note that whatever values you see here, you don't generally want to store them directly in code. You generally want to put them like in an environment variable or use secrets. This is a simple example, simple demo, so I'm not going to go into all of that complication right now, but do know that whatever values you see here, by the time you're doing the course, I would have expunged these from my resource set. So make sure you're using your own and don't try to copy the exact values that you see me have here. So now we have our simple console app that will take some input and return some result courtesy of our GPT-3.5 Turbo um deployment which we have in our open ai uh, resource on microsoft azure so let's go ahead and test this out all right so enter your inquiry um let's say list the best places in jamaica to visit 
All right, so I think by now you know I'm Jamaican. So let's see where in my country would be the best place for you to come and visit. And see, they list out some really nice places. Montego Bay, Negril, Ocho Rios. Kingston is the capital. You can always hike our Blue Mountains. Go to Port Antonio to relax. Trelawney is rich in country. Uh, culture, apologies. And for flora and fauna. Treasure Beach is great. All of these are great places. So, yes, I approve this list. And thank you to our chat completion app that we have just created using our semantic kernel.